Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to talk about uh, some pheasant feathers. I had, a, I had a request and a question about getting using pheasant feathers and the pheasant skin and uh, try to answer some of those questions here. Um, just to start out with, I just tied that carry special. So I'm just going to start out with the pheasant rump. And it has a lot of nice feathers on there. You can refer to these as like the church window feathers. They'll be more on the body. Just great camouflages and olive dyed one. But if you look at it, you can see on the sides, look when I turn it, that 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 hue or that greenish hue that comes through it. And when I get up towards the top of this pheasant rump, you can see there's nice uh, red in there, and it's more yellow in the tips here. And one thing about a lot of the uh, a lot of uh, feathers, bird feathers, when you just fold it in half. Well, I'm going to fold this in half, but you can see. There is a lot of aftershaft feathers. Just about every feather has an aftershaft feather. Just pluck that out. And these are uh, some great feathers for you can use make a pheasant rump nymph where you just take this and dub it on your thread to you to make the body of the pheasant pheasant rump nymph. Jack Gartsai uses a lot of aftershaft feathers. He used a lot of aftershaft feathers. He called them the chicken poop feathers, basically. These ones that just get all over everything and stick to you and stick to everything in the chicken coop. But uh, these are very good. There's very there's several different patterns that uh, Jack designed around the chicken poop type feathers. We got church, like I said, we had church windows, and these are good for uh, for wet flies. You can also use them. Just I'm just thinking here, but you use them. That would make a nice cheek on a streamer. Just imagine that on the side of your streamer, a nice cheek there. <clears throat> uh, coming back up, as I'm going up, you can see that these feathers kind of have. See that little indentation on them? Try to get it. You can see those. We look at those top ones there. Like that little indentation on those feathers. That make that would make a nice uh, stone fly wing if you uh, went ahead and uh, put some head cement or something on there to get them nice and you know firm them up, turn them hard, get a nice stone fly. Uh, wing pad out of them and you know going going up still the same thing you can still get some nice uh, cheek feathers stuff like that then taking the side of that pheasant rump just one of these feathers here like I just showed with the carry special you know these are nice for long uh, for long wet fly hackles you could use them for tails I've used them for tails on dry flies even they're nice and stiff they'll, they'll hold up your dry flies really nice and here's again there's more of those chicken poop feathers just about everywhere you know so just be careful because just about anything you could use is useful. Here is a natural pheasant rump. You can see the, the different colors and the nice colors in these. Oh, that hue on there. Very nice. You know, same thing. You got nice gray aftershaft feathers. The uh, guard side bubbly merger uses the aftershaft feather for the uh, for the wing. You know, and it's just some some really nice 
feathers in the rumps. Now I have a golden pheasant. I have, this is an actual golden pheasant skin, the whole skin here. There's some nice feathers on here. Here's the starting off. That would be the head right there where my thumb is and the neck. Uh, I think they took the golden pheasant crest off of these. But the pheasant crest, if I have it on my desk here. So here's a uh, golden pheasant crest. Right here, the, there's the golden pheasant crest there. You got the uh, tippets, or the, uh, they call them tippets, the feathers that are around the neck they make great tails they're they're especially used in the royal coachman here's a better one for you to see i like using those golden frit those uh the golden pheasant crest for tails on the fancy prints that's what makes it the fancy prints Instead of using goose biots on your prints, and then you use those golden pheasant. And I don't know what it is, but that little yellow on there, it turns them on. But here as we're going, here's tippets on this one. This might not even be a golden pheasant unless it's a female. I don't know. Never really researched a whole lot on that. But we got tippets here. They're not as stiff as the others, but we got some nice tippets. And look at that color on that. Some beautiful tippets you can make tails with those for different flies you can lacquer them up and use them as wing cases on nymphs you know then we got some more body feathers now here's some body feathers a nice uh ginger tone to them here's on the side some really nice uh feathers these are more of the breast feathers but just like the pheasant rump look at how nice and long those those uh barbels are you can see look at how nice and long those barbels are nice color here is the rump from this particular one going to the rump the beautiful yellow i think i might even use these for i'm getting low on the golden crest feathers I might use these on some of the uh, fancy prints they're not quite pure yellow but they're still a nice color here on the side we got some really nice uh, I would call these basically marabou feathers look at the color on that and you know they're, they're basically marabou feathers coming down to the tail got a couple little longer ones in there then you got your wings and your wings, you can use the wings making uh, wet fly wings. You know, you got different styles, colors. And here's the the top ones are a little white, longer. I'm sure you can use the biots off them. There's the biots. That's the leading edge of the flight feathers. You know, good... Uh, variety on that skin and I've had this skin for a very long time but uh, I'm sure I will get into using it uh, of course you have the tails everybody knows what to do with the tails make the pheasant tails but also on the pheasant tail centers and the centers you only get two center tails per bird the very two centers and you can tell they're centers because you can see how these are stiff on both sides. And then you quickly get to the side feathers. So I'm just going to grab one here. And this is a side feather. You can see that all of the stiff ones I took off already. And then those side feathers. So remember that when you're when you're buying them if you actually get to look at them try to get the pheasant tail centers that don't have the soft stuff on one side 
but you can use these. I actually use these for some some flies. I use them for tails on some flies, on some dry flies. Of course, they make good tails on, on uh, nymphs, and they also make good legs on nymphs. Now, here is a different kind of pheasant. This is a Amherst pheasant, and these are very soft there's no there's no real stiff ones on the centers on these there's a longer one that I've been using I love the pattern on this and what I use this for is I use it actually for a for a few different things but if you get an Amherst pheasant tail you can make pheasant tails with this and you can see the difference in the color if you want a, a lighter colored pheasant tail see there's the dark and usually you, it, you, you're usually seeing that really dark the bottom section but on this Amherst pheasant it's the same color on both sides so you really don't have to uh, worry and try to figure out what color that that lighter color that darker color is going to come out on your pheasant tail you're going to know that it's a light colored pheasant it's going to be a light colored pheasant tail and just like with the ring neck pheasant tail you use a wire rib to reinforce it but these are really nice and there's uh, there's certain flies that I don't even tie there was there's a uh, like you know the fancy salmon flies I don't use them I don't have an occasion to use them although there was a few of them that I liked that I that I cut them down to a trout size version and used them and have caught fish on them and here's a tip for you if you wanna you're thinking about maybe getting some of the Amherst pheasant go on eBay and try to find a pheasant farm or go on the internet and try to find a pheasant farm and you can probably get the pheasant feathers a lot cheaper from some place like a pheasant farm so there's kind of a kind of a quick rundown on your pheasant feathers just uh, use your imagination that's what all that's what fly tying is all about I try to I try to uh, show you uh, fly patterns that are imaginative and you know one of the reasons or one of the one of my thinking behind making the videos is to get you to think yeah I'd, personally you know you can make cookie cutter patterns and make them you know just exactly the way that pattern is is meant to be or the original recipe and stuff like that but sure and that's great and there's plenty of situations and they work fantastic because they wouldn't be around if they didn't work but use your imagination and and you know make that personalized I've seen uh, at shows and such I've seen guys come up to me and show me some flies that they made from uh, from watching my videos and frankly I'll be the first to admit they're better looking than uh, my flies but you know I'm sure they're gonna work better looking flies don't always catch fish it's those impressionistic flies that that catch the fish so have fun use your imagination with anything any kind of bird that you come across and make your own patterns and try them out and that's part of the fun of uh, tying your own flies and fishing them is uh, finding patterns that are gonna work and work well and you have fun you feel a sense of pride when you catch fish on something that you make so I hope that you learned something from this video hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends please visit my sponsors Please visit uh, my Etsy page, etsy.com slash shop slash the Flyman Gym if you'd like to purchase any flies from me. If you don't see anything there, what you're looking for, just send me a message and I'll get right back to you as soon as I check my Etsy page anyway. And we'll figure something out. And if there's any way I can help you, just you know send me a message and stuff like that. And... Most of all, I thank you very much for watching my videos.